This is the second part of my talk on models of the Renogram. In the first part I explained what a Renogram is and talked about the kidney, uh, its anatomical structure, the function of the nephrons, and I showed you my black box model. In this second part I'm going to talk about three models of the Renogram. A simple kidney model, a compartmental model, and a Pustix model. So here's a simple model of the kidney based on blood coming in through the renal artery and going out through the renal vein and passing the glomerulus of each of the uh, nephrons represented by a long thin renal tubule emptying into a renal pelvis and coming out down the ureter. If we are interested in the renogram we're interested in two things activity in the blood represented by this red region over the renal artery and the renal vein and activity in the kidney represented by this green region which covers the renal tubules and the renal pelvis. So let's see what happens if we have a small bolus of radiopharmaceutical entering the kidney through the renal artery. Here it comes into the red region of interest so the amount of radiopharmaceutical, the activity in the red region um, rises uh, because we have a sharp input, a bolus input of activity. When it reaches the glomerulus we can have some activity extracted from the blood into the tubules. That may be by glomerular filtration or tubular secretion or a combination of both. But the activity that moves from the red into the green region is the radiopharmaceutical the activity that has been extracted by the kidney. That represents the uptake into the kidney and that's essentially what we're trying to measure with the renogram. So we have some activity appearing in the green region. Over the next few seconds the bolus of activity will leave the renal vein but it takes several minutes to pass down through the renal tubules which are rather long thin tubules with quite a, quite a slow flow through them. So during those few minutes the amount of activity in the green region remains constant as the bolus transits slowly through the tubules. When it gets to the renal pelvis it will mix with urine there and become diluted and get washed out down through the ureter and so the amount of activity remaining in the green region falls um, showing elimination from the kidney. So this simple kidney model says that from a bolus input um, in the blood we get a kidney activity that rises, shows a constant um, activity during the transit and then falls. And we call that the impulse response because it's the response of the kidney to this impulse or bolus input. So that's what this simple kidney model would predict. But it's really a rather idealized renogram because it requires us to have a perfect bolus input representing a blood activity which rises instantly and then falls again immediately afterwards to zero. That's not practical for several reasons. First of all, we'd have to give a perfect injection um, which is possible into a vein but by the time it got to the renal artery it would already be spread out. And so we'd have to give this nice perfect injection directly into the renal artery which is possible but rather um, unnecessarily technically difficult. But even that isn't good enough because after a perfect bolus some of the activity um, isn't removed by the kidney and it passes through and out through the renal vein and that means it can come round a second, a third or fourth time and so this recirculation means that the blood activity um, isn't a perfect bolus no matter how we inject. So had we achieved this idealized renogram with a perfect bolus input we would have this idealized impulse response which would be easy to interpret because the uptake, the transit and the elimination are easily separated. But the real renogram is much more complicated. The blood activity isn't a perfect bolus, it will always have a um, slow recirculation so the blood activity persists um, over uh, several minutes. That means that the real renogram is a different shape so we need to ask what would be the kidney activity corresponding to this blood activity. And we can work that out by looking at our renogram model and see that the 
blood activity we know is actually a falling curve like the red curve but we can represent that as a series of bolus inputs supposing we had a different bolus every minute and if we take the bolus in the first minute um, we know that we get a response which shows a, a rise and then a transit for maybe three minutes and then falls over the next two minutes shown by these white blocks so that's uh, what we expect for the first minute bolus but if we take the second minute as representing another bolus this has to be a little bit smaller blood the blood activity has fallen and if the yellow input is a bit smaller than the white one then the yellow response is a bit smaller than the white one it's also one minute later so the yellow response is one minute later than the white one and we get the yellow curve uh, being the response to the second minute bolus the same shape as the white one but a bit smaller and one minute later so if we add those two together that's the response to the first two minutes the third minute is one minute later and also a bit smaller so we get a red one which is the same shape but a bit smaller and a bit later we add that in we can do the same with the fourth minute the fifth the sixth and the seventh and so on and we build up um, a series of bolus responses representing um, this which is a curve like that which is much more like the shape of the real renogram that rises up to a peak and then falls down again so this is a more realistic model of the renogram um, bearing in mind that the real blood activity is this continuous curve now we can look at the renogram components and see what it's made up of if we look at activity against time we have the uptake component which we've seen um, goes up and up as activity comes from the blood into the kidney but what comes out is a, a delayed version of that in the simple model um, if it takes three minutes for activity to pass through the kidney what comes out will be the same as what went in three minutes before and so this transit time gives us a delayed version for the elimination curve but what's in the kidney is just the difference between what went in and what went out so these green bars represent that difference and that gives us a shape like this which again is another model of the shape of the renogram we can notice that uptake goes on throughout the whole of the renogram but elimination doesn't start until a few minutes later because it takes a few minutes to transit through the tubules and so we have the components uh, of uptake and elimination superimposed but if we look at the first few minutes of the renogram we have um, uptake only because elimination hasn't started so during this time we can measure uptake from the renogram without any superposition of elimination at this point elimination starts when the blue curve begins to rise the green curve representing the renogram deviates from the purple one representing uptake and that must happen slightly before the peak because before the peak uptake is winning and after the peak elimination is winning so at the peak uptake and elimination exactly balance each other out so elimination must have started shortly before the peak and the downslope of the renogram represents the time when elimination is greater than um, uptake and elimination is winning another model is the compartmental model and we can uh, use that to represent the kidney with four different compartments or um, areas within the body the first one is the blood into which we're going to inject the activity and the uh, next one is extravascular tissue everything outside the blood everything outside the vascular system and the traces that we use can usually freely exchange between the blood and these extravascular tissues in both directions they can travel from the blood into the tissue and back from the tissue into the blood they're all going to be removed by the kidneys and that's a one-way process um, from the blood into the kidney and by kidney here I mean the renal tubules and the pelvis um, I'm not thinking about the renal artery and the renal vein that's part of the blood compartment and of course it all moves on into the bladder eventually so if we give an injection into the blood we see we start with a high concentration in the blood and we're going to look at how the com concentration at each compartment changes with time so the blood concentration starts high because that's where we inject but then it falls the reason it falls are twofold first of all it's being um, diffusing from the blood into the extravascular tissues and secondly because it's being extracted from the blood into the kidney 
So the kidney activity started at zero and it rises with time as activity comes in from the blood. Likewise the tissue starts from zero and rises as activity diffuses from the blood. Nothing comes out of the kidney for a few minutes because of the uh, delay through the tubules and after maybe three or four minutes um, it begins to come out into the bladder so the kidney goes down and the bladder starts to go up. All this time the blood activity is going down and the extravascular tissues are going up. So there must come a time when the concentration in the tissues will be greater than the concentration in the blood. And at that time we get a net diffusion back in the opposite direction from tissue back into blood. That means that the tissue will reach a maximum and begin to come down again and the blood which was falling continues to fall but it doesn't fall quite so quickly as before because it's been replenished from the tissues. So the blood curve continues to go down more slowly, the tissue reaches a maximum and comes down again. The kidney is still going down and the bladder is still going up and eventually it will all end up in the bladder. But from this model the curve that represents the renogram is the green one, activity in the tubules and pelvis. And the model says that if you should start from zero, rise up to a peak and then come down again. Um, the rate of rise is not constant, and um, this is a gentle curve up to a maximum, because the rate at which it rises depends how much there is in the blood. Right at the very beginning there's a lot of activity in the blood, so the amount in the kidney is going up quite quickly, but as the blood concentration falls, the rate of rise in the kidney begins to flatten off a bit. So this is a gentle curve up to the maximum before it falls again. So that's what the model says for the renogram. The third model is my poo sticks model, and uh, this is the um, game of poo sticks that was described by A. A. Milne in his book The House at Poo Corner where the game is played by Christopher Robin and his friends uh, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. So the game is played by them taking little sticks and dropping them from a bridge into the stream below and then running to the other side of the bridge to see whose stick comes out first. That game of poo sticks has probably uh, been replaced by the modern version which is the yellow plastic ducks where um, charities like to raise money by getting you to sponsor a plastic duck with your name on the under, written underneath it and then you throw hundreds of these ducks into a stream from a bridge and whichever comes to the bottom first wins a prize. So the yellow plastic ducks is just like a glorified game of poo sticks instead of having two or three sticks you've got hundreds of plastic ducks but otherwise the game is the same. You're watching your chosen item go down the stream to see um, which gets to the bottom first. And a race like that is usually won or lost at a, some pool where the um, uh, plastic ducks will circulate around a few, a few times and maybe get stuck before they come out. But the river in this is analogous to the kidney if you think about it. Um, the bridge where everything is thrown in is like the glomerulus where Tracer gets into the kidney. Um, the stream is like the renal tubules carrying them along and a pond is like the renal pelvis where molecules or plastic ducts can circulate for a few times and the outflow is like the, the ureter. Um, the plastic ducts are showing the flow in the stream. You don't really notice where the water is going quickly and where it's going slowly until you put the plastic ducts in. So the plastic ducts act like a marker for the flow in the stream in just the same way as radiopharmaceuticals show transit through the kidney. So the um, renogram with radioactive tracers is showing transit through the kidney in the same way as the yellow plastic ducts are showing flow through the stream. So although you may think that's a rather unlikely model of the kidney, I think that's a useful analogy. So that's the end of the second part of my talk. In the third part I'll look at how the different radiopharmaceuticals used for inography are handled by the kidneys. <laughs>